So in the packaging facility, we have the electrical area over here. So this is where we do our PDC buildings. We'll walk through one of the buildings. You can see the auxiliary skids there. You can see the finishing of the, of the inlets after that. We also have our own tubing area. At the end, we do all our own stainless steel welding. So we do all our own tanks, all our own piping, um, all the stainless steel welding inside. At the very back in the back corner is the panel shop, and then the other side of the bay is where we do the assembly of the turbine and generator panel uh, skids. So we'll go into a PDC. Normally they aren't both skinned already, so. <clears throat> you can see the scale of the PDC design. So it's very large tube steel structure. Um, our standard package is designed for equivalent of about 180 to 200 mile an hour winds. It's also seismically rated for California. So we build it the same way every time. We don't have a seismic package. We don't have a high wind package. We, they're all basically built the same way. That way we ship the same one every time and we don't have to worry about that. Right? There are occasionally a customer wants a special modification. We can do that, obviously, but generally we like to build the, our reliable package to the point where we're so refined now with what we do and how we build it that we have actually had successful first button starts. So the first time we push the button, the engine start and went up, no problem. And that's from the standardization, the repeatable. We know all the electrical. You know your termination points. You know how it all goes together. You have an excellent startup and commissioning team, which we also have in our PowerFlex team, uh, combined with what comes out of the shop as a repeatable product. And that's how you get to that level of, of repeatability, right? So again, you can see the large steel I-beam construction or the rec tube construction in this one. Uh, the way the PDC is set up is it's set up as a mirror. So if you look on one side, you see one set of panels and, and MCCs, the other side's the same set. So it's designed to run two units. So if you look at our multi-unit sites, there's one PDC between each of the units. All the wires come in from the bottom. All the wiring in the PDC uses the cable trays around the top to interconnect between all the control panels. So this is the, one of the, the BOP panels. So this, this control screen right here, if you have a 10 unit site, you can control all 10 units from this one screen, right? Now, generally it's designed to be for the two units that this one supports, but you, they're all networked by fiber optic, right? So you can network and, and control all the, all the machines from here. Um, and then the, but the motor controls and the actual control cabinets are just for the two units. The uh, fully redundant air conditioning systems, good for California, good for, I'm um, sorry, Texas, um, good for all, all over the world, basically, because it's doubled down. Um, we also have battery backup systems for both 125 volt, right, and, um, and the larger voltage, but both of them are sized for two units. So they're not 100% redundant because we actually run the power through the chargers so that there's no switchover required, right? Because the power's running through the charger, it just automatically goes to the battery, right? And so that's much more effective from a turnover standpoint. So you can see some of the battery backups here. So now here are all the panels. So these are turbine control panels. These are our GSU panels, and those are the GPPs. So all of these panels, as well as that panel at the end of the package, were all built in the panel shop that we visited earlier, right? So all those terminations, all that wiring comes here, and then all the wire from the cable trays are fed to these panels, to all the motor starters, right? Which you have to get all the, all the control and all the electrical knowledge into the actual motor starters, which actually make things turn on and off, right? And then all of that information goes to the skid, which is what we'll go see next, which is the auxiliary skids. So this is our auxiliary skid. Um, the auxiliary skid is designed to support the bulk of the auxiliaries. Um, here we've got our turbine lube oil tank, right? Our turbine lube oil system over here. The turbine lube oil tank, again, all the tanks. So you look at the skid, anything painted gray, right? Or anything stainless steel was most likely made here, right? So the frames made here, all the tanks, all the piping, all the tubing. So this is the turbine lube oil. All of our turbine lube oil systems come with an oil water separator um, to help maintain, to help reduce the, the water in the oil. We have our, our um, water wash system over here. And then over here is our NOx water. 
So one of the things that we did was to redesign the Knox water system. On a lot of sites, it's a separate skid. It's a pump, gearbox, motor. The um, alignment, the manufacturing of that was problematic and it has issues in the field. We've changed that out. We have a new system here where it's an integral gearbox pump mounted right to the motor shaft. Uh, it simplifies it, makes it smaller. Um, it actually outperforms the old system and it was cheaper in the long run. So, uh, the basis of the actual pump is B52 technology, if you can imagine. Um, but what it's enabled us to do is get it onto the auxiliary skid, eliminate the other skid, eliminate a bunch of the alignment and leak issues that we had and create a much, uh, a much more reliable system on the, on, the, uh, on the skid. This is the hydraulic system, so this is primarily for hydraulic start. So you get your filter, your main hydraulic motor and pump, the tank, and then the cooling system um, for all of the hydraulics. So this basically puts everything on this main auxiliary skid necessary to run the engine. The only other skid we have, which is just the next one to go see, is our WISPA skid, so that's the water injection skid for power augmentation. So this is, this is our WISPA. So WISPA skid, water, spray, power augmentation, WISPA, that's what you get if you let an engineer name your skid. So you get WISPA. Um, so uh, this is our WISPA skid. It's low pressure water injection. Uh, it's very similar to Sprint. We've simplified the skid dramatically. There's a lot of simplification associated with it. We've taken off the HP, but we've cut down on the number of connections as well as the number of devices on the skid. Very reliable um, and in a, in a nice compact small package. But again, all built here. The next area here over to our left is our tubing. So if you see the tubing on the package, it was all hand bent and done by our tubing specialists here on the, in the campus. So I think of a package as a bit, a bit like Lego. So when I'm trying to put a package together, I want everything to fit together and I want it to all let stand up. So you've got the turbine package and the generator package. On top of that goes the, the roof skid. On top of the roof skid goes the inlet. Right? So all of those pieces need to fit together and fit together cleanly. So this is a roof skid. The roof skid includes the fans for both the generator and the uh, gas turbine package. It includes the main air duct, of course, for the gas turbine. And it also includes the VBV exhaust duct, including the silencer systems, which goes in those. And then we've got an oil mist system for oil, water, oil mist separation on the top of the roof skid. So it comes over from fab looking like this, and it comes out of assembly looking like this. These ducts are part of our inlet heaters. So our inlet heating system uses a box plenum. It either redirects the air from inside the package enclosure into the inlet, or it dumps that air overboard. So if you're within freezing temperature conditions, you can change the dampers, put the air down through these ducts, it enters through the main inlet coil modules and changes the temperature of the inlet air by roughly 10 degrees, but enough to get you out of icing conditions, which means you never have to shut down your machine for icing conditions. Now there are other systems, there's glycol systems, there's, there's uh, inlet bleed heat systems, but all of those systems do, are more, much more complicated and quite often steal air off the compressor, which means you lose a lot of performance. While this system doesn't steal air off the compressor, it does redirect air from the, from the exhaust of the inlet package or of the turbine package. What it doesn't do is it doesn't have anything in the air area, so there's no pressure drop impact. So you don't have a pressure drop impact associated with your anti-icing, and you have a very simple system, and with this triangular duct, distributes the air evenly across that coil module and gets you what you need. Okay? Uh, here's your coil modules over here. They get electrically set up. We put all the differenti dif uh, differential pressure transducers, the lights, the electrical, the bird screen, the, the, oil, the mist separators, all of that goes into them. This is how they look when they come out of fab. <clears throat> then here at the back of the shop, and again with the welding light, this is where we do all our stainless steel welding, so all our piping, tanks, all the other equipment that we need to do over here. Bit of a broken record, but very vertically integrated. So there's our panel shop at the back. So we make the steel angle. We put in the acoustical material. We put in the we put in the insulation. We put on the perf plate, and we build all our own panels. 
So there's, there's certain advantages. When you think about all the vertical integration you've seen, one of the big advantages for us during the pandemic is we double, tripled our output during it. And we could do that because we were ordering a lot of raw materials. We weren't ordering finished goods that required a lot of other people to do things, right? Which was the biggest problem from a supply chain standpoint during the pandemic. And this allowed us to grow very quickly. But more importantly, it allows us to do different things with our packages. So this is a generator package, almost done and then a gas turbine package. So each generator and gas turbine package, each generator and gas turbine package are fit up in the, in the shop and serialized on these plates so that these two plates go together and when they go together we know that it lines out the way it should and we get exactly the alignment we need. In the generator package, you can see the generator package is actually designed for either a, an older brush generator, a new brush generator, a Medentia generator, or a GE generator. So it can receive all of the different generators. But just some uniqueness, we have the oil tank at the back for when we're in, 50, in 60 hertz, but we have an aisle down the side. So a lot of packages, generator packages, do not have an access aisle all the way down the side. In addition to that, we split these panels down the side to allow it easy for one person to lift the panels and to be able to go down and do the service down below. Another small thing, we have a light over the electrical panel and a light over each door. A lot of the generator packages out there have one light, right? Now, why do we put the extra lights in? Why do we cut the panels? Why do we? Well, first of all, it's better for our customers, but secondly, we also install and service the machines. So it's better for us. We benefit from it. We get that payback, right? And a, a similar example would be on the gas turbine package. So in the gas turbine package, we have a door. And this door right here allows us access to the inlet volute. On most of the packages, there's a hatch. You have to climb up a ladder or, or man lift. You have to take the hatch off. Then you have to climb through and take another hatch off and then climb through and get to the inlet volute. Instead, we put a door on both sides. Now you can just go directly into the hatch and you can get to this lower hatch too without having to um, you know, use a ladder or climb from a hatch through a hatch or worse for this lower one, there is no lower hatch. You have to crawl on your hands and knees through here and work in a confined space. Well, we're making our own panels. So the, the, the change for us is putting a latch and hinges on the panel and turning it into a door. So we put a door on both sides to make that better, right? We made our main doors just a little bit bigger because we could. Do our main doors cost a little bit more? Yes, they do, but because we make them ourselves, the cost is relatively small, right? And it gives you better access to get the engine in and out, okay? You can see the main inlet volute, which turns the air from the inlet down along the length of the gas turbine. You can see the front legs, the rear legs. So those rear legs, turnbuckles, the ends of the main rear legs, those are all manufactured in our arm facility, which you saw earlier. Um, in addition, when we lay out the floor in our package, we enable it so that you can go down in the floor and there's room for someone to go down into the floor and service the equipment on the floor of the package. It's not, we don't use the main space. We put everything to the edges so that there's room to service, access, and get to the equipment. So that's another key element of what we do. And then it goes out the back of the gas turbine and goes through an exhaust duct. You can see an exhaust duct sitting in the aisle right there. I don't make everything I'd like to think I did. Um, the inlet volute and the exhaust duct is made by a very good supplier that we have a strong relationship with, but that volute and diffuser are to our print. So they're build to print to our design, okay? You can see over here, just in front of those packages, that's what a gas turbine and generator package look like when they come out of the fabrication shop. So that's what comes out of fabrication and paint. And this is more or less what comes out of assembly, right? And then we take all the pieces from this area, right? And we take that and we build a package out of it. Um, I'll point to a small, you can see that small cylindrical silencer there on the floor. So that's a good example. Another good example of who we are. During, the, during some transition and some of the supply chain issues, one of our suppliers increased the price of that um, silencer by 5x. So we reverse engineered it and we make them ourselves now because we're not paying 5x. <laughs> 
So, you know, and we've done that in a number of areas around the package, and it helps with our vertical integration, and it gives the, the guys new things and more things to work on. Um, and with a strong engineering team and with the knowledge we have of the equipment, we're capable of doing that reverse engineering, right? And with that, we'll go out to test. <laughs>